you've been noticed. All right. So what was I saying? Should I start over? No. Okay. All right. So true or false is the integral from zero to ten of f of x dx equal to the integral from zero to ten of f of t dt. So this is true. The idea here is that it doesn't matter really what variable I use. If f is the same function and I graph it using t or x or what have you, the area under the curve will be the same. Okay, so this is true. Can't really read that that well. So the the next on the next question says evaluate this definite integral of f of x from a to b. All right, and you're given a plot here of the function f, and um, they also show you like where the limits of integration are a and b. Okay, so the area the the area of the green like shape is a, just called capital A, and the area of the I don't know, salmon shape is B. So what would this definite integral evaluate to? So so be careful with like like lowercase a and lowercase b are x coordinates. Those are your um, limits of integration. Yes, good. Capital A minus B. Okay, the definite integral gives you the net area. So area like trapped between the curve and the x-axis that's above the x-axis, you take to be positive. Um, area that's trapped between the curve and the x-axis that's below the x-axis, you take to be negative. All right, so let's do another example. Um, here we're given a graph of the function of some function f of x, and we're going to evaluate these integrands or these integrals. You can't really see it that well. All right, let's 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 look at the second one. Um, so from zero, the second one says, like, evaluate this definite integral from zero to one for the function f of x. So what this means is find the area between the x-axis and the curve on the closed interval from zero to one. OK, so really, I'm just trying to evaluate this area, OK? So with these sort of piecewise linear graphs, you can generally just do it like do it using geometry. I can, I mean, the shape that I've shaded in is just a triangle, right? So what is the area of a triangle in terms of its base and height? Uh, it'll be over L'Hopital's rule. Good, 1 half base times height. Okay, what is um, the base, or what's the width of the base of this triangle? Yeah, just one. And then what is the height? Good, three. Okay, so we just computed the area between the curve and the x-axis, all like over the interval from zero to one. So the next one, going from zero to two, you would compute it from zero to two, and again you would take. Um, okay, thank you. You would take 
area below the curve to be negative. So I'm going to break it all into groups, and I want y'all to sort of like just finish this problem here, um, problem two. Cars. Uh, so you can work on these problems together.
Okay, no more digital social distancing. Can you hear me? <laughs> no. Okay. Indeed, Sam, it would be counted as negative. Okay. So, um, good. So, looking at the second one from zero to two. So, this is again, this is. Uh, the net area. All right. So from zero to two, I, I still am covering this like first triangle, but I'm also covering, let's use a different color. Uh, what color should I use? Green. Green is first. Ooh, Carolina blue. That's where I did my PhD. Indeed. Okay, so from zero to two, I'm also covering this area, except this area counts as negative. And you can probably tell from the picture that um, that it's it's kind of like equal and opposite, right? I do have a PhD. Uh, just regular math, though, not freaking. All right. So this area here is also just one half base times height, where the base of this triangle is one and the height is three. But we take it to be negative area, all right? So this will be three halves minus three halves, or just zero. So the integral, the definite integral from zero to two is just zero. Basically, I have, I have equal areas um, above and below the x-axis. All right, so from zero to six, the next the next integral asks us to compute um, the area under the curve from zero to six. All right, so we've already done like part of this. We've already computed it from zero to two. So you can kind of do these like in a like a sort of piecewise manner. Like you can take it one one shape at a time. I know the area from zero to two is zero. So the area from zero to six will just be like all that's left is the part from two to six. So I'll just need to compute. this area here. OK, so this red shaded in shape, what shape is that? <laughs> Box is one way of writing it. Indeed, a rectangle. What's the area of a rectangle? Base times height, good, or length times width, either way. Okay, so the area here of this shape will be base, a length times width, or base times height, whatever you want to call it. So from two to six, the base is width four, and the height is three. Right? So the area is 12, and since it's below 
the x-axis. When we compute the integrand, we count it as uh, negative. All right. So the three shapes that sort of contribute to this integral are the first triangle, which has positive area three halves, the second triangle, which has which we have negative area three halves, and then finally the square, which has uh, negative area twelve. Okay, so the integral from zero to six of f of x dx evaluates to negative twelve. Indeed. So the first one is the first question, which I sort of skipped past, is zero. All right. You can think of an integral. Uh, it really is just like base times height, where the base is the interval or given by the limits of integration from zero to zero, like or from a to b. So that's kind of your base, and then the height is given by the the value of the function. The thing is that this is a dynamic value. All right. So we're sort of taking a bunch of a bunch of little like base times heights, base base times heights, and like adding them together. And really, what we're doing with the integral is we're doing this sort of infinitely many times, right? So indeed, this does evaluate to zero because I can't have any like area below a point. Yeah, negative area is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's look at question two. So here we're given a bit of info about um, this function f and its integrals over certain intervals. And we want to answer what is, uh, the, what is the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x. So we know the integral from 0 to 3 is evaluates to 3. Okay, so let me just draw sort of a picture here. So I have some function, and I'm not claiming this is what the function actually looks like. Um, Okay, I know that the area from z the area from zero to three under the curve evaluates to three. Okay, I want to know what is just the area from zero to two. Okay, and I also know a little bit something about the area from two to three. There's that two in front. But the thing I want to point out is that let's see. The area under the curve from zero to three, I can sort of break this. I can break this up into two two different parts. I can say, well, this is equal to the area under the curve from zero to two, plus the area under the curve from two to three. Right, and that shouldn't be like too hard to believe, right? If I look at this picture, um, the, the sort of blue shaded area is the area from 0 to 2. The green shaded area is the area under the curve from 2 to 3. And if I add those two areas together, I get the area under the curve from 0 to 3. OK, so I know this equation that I've written down. Um, I know the left hand side evaluates to 3. And I want to find the first term on the right hand side. All right. The last term on the right-hand side is I know that the integral from 2 to 3 of 2 times f of x is 4. All 
All right. If the area under the curve of 2f of x is 4 from 2 to 3, what do you think the area under the curve from 2 to 3 of just f is? Good, just 2. And that's true. Basically, what, what happens when I multiply the function by 2 is that at every single point, I'm multiplying the height of my shape by 2. So if I multiply the height by 2, that just multiplies the area by 2. All right. So indeed, um, just f of x from 2 to 3 will be 2. All right. So then this equation that I've written on the right here just becomes 3 equals the integral from 0 to 2 plus 2. So what is... What is the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x dx? Good, just 1. If 3 equals something plus 2, that something has to be 1. OK. If you have a right ergo and your solutions and taking points off. Indeed. <laughs> Whomst among us hasn't used ergo? So we got two from. Um, all right, so think about, like, this is a bit of an oversimplification, but think if I was just looking at the area under like a, a constant function. Okay, if I just doubled that function, yeah, yeah, right, then the area under the curve would be doubled, right? So that's what's happening, basically. So if I know the area under the, the doubling function is 4, then the area under the original function uh, is just 2. Okay, so let's look at question three. Um, what is the use of integrals in real life? Um, well, good question. So, to get a degree in that's not exactly true. It is partially true. Uh, yeah, you'll see there's applications like, like calculus is, I know a lot of people think like math is useless, which some some of their education may be, but calculus is definitely like important to the way the world runs. Okay, any like engineer, uh, like engineer learns like integrals. It's just the basic idea of computing like the area under a curve, um, understanding like rates of change, um, differential equations that govern like how heat is conducted or how uh, like electricity flows. Uh, it's really like all over the face. Okay, so looking at the next one, um, the uh, we want to sketch the graph to see this. So remember, we're like always remember, like eventually you'll learn these like algebraic um, technique or calcul like calculus techniques for evaluating these integrals and you'll you'll find an antiderivative and plug some numbers in but you should always remember that the integral is just the area under the curve it's like a geometric thing okay uh not yet <laughs> all right so 
I can evaluate this if I can graph this and I can recognize the shape of the curve as something that I'm familiar with. Then I can then I can evaluate the integral without having to like do any algebraic manipulations. All right. So if my function, if this is the graph, like this, so this is my integrand, right? So f of x equals square root nine minus x squared. And I want to know what is the area under the curve of this graph. Does anyone know what this graph looks like? Good, it's a semicircle, yeah, right? So if I square both sides of this equation, I get y squared equals 9 minus x squared, or y squared plus x squared equals 9, all right? This is a circle with radius 3. All right, since it's a positive square root, it's just the top half of the circle. All right, so this is basically asking me to evaluate the area under the curve from 0 to 3. All right, so what's the area of the circle? Pi r squared, right? So if the whole circle has area pi r squared, so the whole circle would have area 9 pi. What is the um, area of just the green shaded bit? Good, just 9, nine over 4 pi or 9 pi over 4. So the integral from 0 to 3 of the square root of 9 minus x squared dx is 9 pi over 4. All right, so let's look at question four now. So this is the area under the sine curve from zero to two pi. All right, what is, um, what is sine of zero? If I plug zero into sine, what do I get? Just zero. Good. So sine is this um, wave function, right, that goes back and forth between one and negative one, and it has period two pi. So it reaches one at pi over two, comes back down to pi, or to zero at pi, reaches negative one at three pi over two, and comes back up to zero at two pi. Okay, so this 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 thing that we're trying to evaluate the definite integral from zero to two pi of sine of t dt. What do you think this evaluates to based on the picture? Zero, right? I don't really have any idea. I mean. It's not hard to find out, but like looking at this, like the this pictures, they're not circles, so it's like I don't really know what this area exactly is. Um, but it is definitely like exactly canceled out by the area under the the shape below the curve or below the x-axis. Jamie. I mean, I, I could find out the area. 
Yeah, my chair is pretty squeaky. That's that's the point of, of learning math is that you don't have to memorize everything. If you know that if you know the general technique, all these answers are available to you. It's a great power. I can tell you what the area is. The area is zero to pi sine of t dt. It is quite bonky. Okay, so now finally let's start um, just listing some properties. Right? So these are things you don't actually need to memorize, but we'll go over them in any case. In any case. All right. So the first one is asking what is the value of the integral from a to a of f of x dx. Yep, and this so this evaluates to zero. All right, I'm going to add some information here. So say the integral from a to b f of x dx is uh, some value l, and the integral from a to b of some function g of x dx is some value m. Oh, that's not an m. OK, I'm um, looking at the second one. The integral from a to b f of x dx plus the integral from b to c f of x dx. Okay, so we already kind of did this one. Um, we sh we saw that we saw that if you measure the area under a to b and then from b to c, it's the same thing as the area under what other interval? A to c. Good. OK, the next one's a little weird. Um, if, you're, if you switch the, um, the limits of integration, this basically has the effect of, of negating your answer. So if the area from A to B, or if the area under the curve from A to B is called, is we, if we call that L, then you say that the area under the curve from like B to A is negative L. All right, if C is a constant, then what's the area under the curve C from A to B? Good, B minus A times C. That's just a rectangle, right? This like shaded area where it has height C and width B minus A. Um, yeah, so Zerifa, like an example would be if if the integral from 2 to 3 of f of x dx is 5, then the integral from 3 to 2 f of x dx is negative 5. So basically, like like the area is five, but you think about sort of reading it from left to right, or you like you're adding things up going from left to right. So if you're going right to left, then you sort of um, negate the answer. Yes. Okay. The area under the curve from A to B. If I take if I add two functions together, then this is the same thing as just taking the integral separately. OK, 
Okay. And if I take the difference of two functions, it's the same thing as just taking the difference of the definite integrals. Okay, and then finally, um, we also so, sort of saw an example of this. If I multiply a function by a constant, it's the same thing as if I just took the integral otherwise and multiplied by the same constant. So you can, you can basically pull constants outside of integrals. Number four, yeah, C is a constant, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's minus L. Okay, so now we'll get into some actual calculus involving um, this definite integral. All right. So we're going to talk about the limit definition of the definite integral. And we'll do this. And this is basically the idea is that this will be a limit of Riemann sums. OK, so just to sort of remind you. For Riemann sums, we take some graph. And we estimate the area under the curve using rectangles. All right, the definite integral is the ex is just means the area under the curve. So it's the exact area under the curve, All right? So a Riemann sum gives us an estimate. The definite integral is the exact area of the curve. We can, we can get to that exact area by taking a limit of these Riemann sums. All right. And the idea is basically we just use more and more and more rectangles, letting the number of rectangles go to infinity. All right. So it, it shouldn't be like, whoops, what does that even mean? Go away. All right. It shouldn't be like terribly hard to see that if I use more rectangles, the approximation gets better. All right. So here I'm using four. But what if I use like a whole bunch, whatever this is, technical term, whole bunch. OK, so this is a this is like a much better approximation than just using four. I'm, I'm overestimating by much less. OK, what if I used a thousand rectangles? Then you would have to really zoom in to see the difference. Or what if I used a million? OK, so the idea is that if I um, let the number of rectangles go to infinity, then I am like recovering the exact area. OK, so we'll do we'll do sort of an example of that here. All right. So this is this is a Riemann sum.
Okay, each of these terms inside of the sumand, the f of xi delta x, represents the area of a single rectangle from this picture. All right, delta x is the width, f of xi is the height. How do you spell height? Is that right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like that. H, yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, the f of, like, x, the x of i's are the points that are, like, either the, um, the left or right endpoints that we talked about before, where, where you would measure the height of the rectangle. Okay, so let's let's look at this here. So say I divide the interval 1 through 5 into n subintervals uh, of equal length delta x. All right, then delta x will be, so the formula for this basically, is b minus a over n, where this interval 1 through 5 is a to b. OK, so in our case, it'll be 5 minus 1 over n, or 4 over n. All right. This like x0, x1, x2, x3, up to xi, these are like the sort of arbitrary points, like the left or right endpoints generally, where we're measuring our um, height. So the way we're going to do it here is we're actually going to use left endpoints. Okay, so I'm sort of dividing up the interval from 1 to 5 into 4 over n pieces, or sorry, into n pieces, where they're each width 4 over n. All right? So the first point is just 1. That's just my leftmost endpoint. Then, like, the next left endpoint will be 4 over n to the right. All right? So it'll be 1 plus... 4 over n. My next endpoint will be another like 4 over n units to the right. So this will be 1 plus 4 over n plus 4 over n, or 1 plus 8 over n. Okay, x3 will be 4 over n units to the right of that, so that will be 1 plus 12 over n. Okay, and I can write the general point x sub i as 1 plus 4 over n times i, or 1 plus 4i over n. Okay, uh, so I think I'm just going to end there, and I'll finish this problem uh, next time. But I'll post the solutions uh, as well, and I'll post the solutions the last time sheet as well. All right, so that's all for today. Um, we'll review for your module on Friday, and I'll I'll see y'all then. All right, have a good one. Yeah, y'all too. Uh, something called Schubert Calculus, Matt, or something related to Schubert Calculus. Not Schubert. Yeah, the next module is this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, thank you. Yeah, E is 12 over N. organized libraries.